All right, you take a good break, or maybe it's the next day, however you break this up. Um, I should have told you before, we're gonna start now. We're gonna go to Matthew 27 because it tells this part a little bit better. And on your notes, we're on number seven. Um, actually, we're on number six, but we'll fill that out. I'm gonna read this portion. Please just read it with me. And then we'll go back and I'll, I'll talk about some details and we'll fill in our notes. So we're on Matthew 27, verse 45. Let's read it together. Now from the sixth hour, until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. And about the ninth hour, so that's three hours of darkness. Now that's freaky, okay? So we'll go back to that. Three hours where it was dark in the middle of the day, because that was three o'clock to six o'clock. It's not normal. So people were a little freaked out and they understood that something really big was happening here. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthiana, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, that's Hebrew, for, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now some of those who stood there when they heard it said, this man is calling for Elijah. And immediately one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. Another version says that he said, I thirst, another gospel. But the rest said, let him alone and let us see if Elijah will come and save him. And then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and he yielded up his spirit. Now what he said with the loud voice in another gospel you can read, says, it is finished. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. And behold, verse 51, at that moment, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Can you imagine the high priests in there going, and all the priests and the servants inside the temple going, what just happened? And the earth quaked and rocks were split and graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Whoa, people saw dead people coming out of the graves. And they were coming out of the graves after his resurrection. They went into the holy city and appeared to many. What? Three days later, they were still walking around and people were seeing grandma and grandpa and Aunt Sally. That's amazing. And when the centurion, the Roman soldier, and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that were happening, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. And many of the women who followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him, there were. They were looking on from afar, among them were Mary Magdalene, the mother, and Mary, the mother of James and Josie, and the mother of Zebedee's children. And I'm going to stop there. So we're going to go to another gospel. So first of all, let's go back to number six. You noticed I said it. So there was darkness for three hours. From three o'clock, you need to have three o'clock, and the Bible called that the sixth hour. So then the first hour was nine o'clock. So from three o'clock to the ninth hour, which was six o'clock. So put those, make sure you have both. I'm gonna give you points for both. Now, what happened during that darkness is not clear from just reading the gospel account. We have to go back and read Isaiah to see what happened. And what did God say was going to be happening with this Christ, this Son of God, this Messiah? And then later, what did Hebrews say was happening? How did they explain it? We just see the event, but it's not exactly clear what was going on unless we dig deeper. So what was happening during that? Well, he cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now remember, Jesus is fully God. He's crying out to the Father. 
and yet he is fully man dying a painful death and we cannot understand because we can't separate him there was no point where he wasn't god but the scripture says at that moment god turned his face from him because he became sin for us and for that moment in time the father turned away from him and i'm going to read isaiah 53 so can you flip back push pause for a minute and you're, this is a very familiar form, uh, portion of scripture, but push pause if you need to and come back with me. And I'm going to read Isaiah 53 because this reminds us, this is what's happening right now. I'll start with verse four. Surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed, esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was the chastisement. You know what chastisement is. For our peace was on him, and by his stripes we were healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, and we have turned everyone to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers was silent, he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who will declare his generation? He was cut off from the land of the living, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, Joseph Arimathea was rich, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit found in his mouth, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him and put him to grief. And then I'm going to skip down to verse 11, where it says, My righteous servant will justify many. He will bear their iniquities. He, at that moment, was bearing the sin of the world. And so to help you write this for number seven, Jesus became sin for us. And the Father turned away from him for that moment. And then I want you to write in parentheses that you read Isaiah 53. You can put that right there. So we read right before he died, the two things he said right before that moment. And we're going to talk in more detail about that when we talk about the veil being torn. Okay, I'm going to go into a little more depth, but so that you can follow along. At that moment, as God turned, all these things were kind of simultaneous. God, he, he says, God momentarily turns his face from the son whom he loves because he is bearing the weight of sin and literally becomes sin for him, Jesus feels forsaken by the Father. There is a earthquake and rock split. The veil of the temple is torn and something actually miraculous is happening. And God, Jesus is making a way into the Holy of Holies for us. And that we'll talk about in a minute. So what did he say? He said two things. You have to write them both. Number eight. He said, it is finished, meaning I have done what I came to do. And into thy hands, I commend my spirit, meaning I am giving up my life. I'm God. Nobody takes it from me, he said to Pilate. You have no authority that God didn't give you. Sorry, dude. Um, into thy hands, I commit my spirit. And what he said to the people who had crucified him was, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. The mercy of God, the grace of God, they don't really understand. Now, we're going to go to um, number nine. So what was happening in the temple at that moment? And I'm going to read from Hebrews 10. 
So first of all, I want you to write Hebrews 10, 11 to 25. This is going to be worth five points, but you have to be honest with me. And I want you to read Hebrews 10 by yourself after we, after the video. I'm going to read some of it, but I want you to read it by yourself. So if you write Hebrews 10, 11 to 25, I read it, you will get five points, okay? So number nine says, at the moment he died, what happened in the temple? And what did happen? And why did it happen? Sorry, I can't read my own writing. And what did it mean? Three questions. What happened? Why did it happen? And what did it mean? So after you've written Hebrews 10, 11 to 25, I read it. You could put that maybe up at the top. Here's what happened. First, the veil tore from top to bottom. We read that. That's what happened. What did it, why did it happen? And what did it mean? It meant that God no longer needed to separate his holy presence from man because of sin. God no longer needed to separate his holy presence from man because of sin. Remember in the garden, Adam and Eve had to go and his presence was guarded by the cherubim and a flame, with flaming swords. They could see it, but they couldn't come to the presence of God. And then it wasn't till the tabernacle was built that there was a place for the presence of God, but it was guarded. There was sacrifice and washing and cleansing and ceremony to represent coming into his presence holy and clean. And then there was a veil that separated the Holy of Holies even from the holy place. And only the high priest could go in and only once a year. And even then he had to go through rituals and they had to put a, a rope around his foot in case he did something wrong and they could pull him out. 